This video is brought to you by Skillshare. Today we're going to be learning about error handling in Swift. Specifically, we're going to be taking a look at throwing errors, why they're helpful, and how to propagate what actually went wrong up to the caller of a function. So here we have a bunch of documentation that I'm not going to bore you guys with, but please do drop a like down below, hit subscribe, let's open up Xcode, and let's write some code. So we're gonna start off here in Xcode 12.5 and I'm gonna go ahead and start by creating a playground and then we're gonna do a actual real world example with a single view app, but let's just get the basics down. So we're gonna go ahead and create a blank uh, playground here. We'll go ahead and call it throw error and let's take a look at the syntax of throwing errors, what it is and how to use it. So quite simply, uh, a lot of our code, when we write uh, asynchronous functions in particular, things can go wrong, right? Whether it's an API call or you're trying to do some type of operation, wh whether it's compressing something or anything, right? Something could go wrong. And we have a tendency as developers to not really handle errors well. Usually what you'll see is maybe we'll have func do something and you know there's some type of completion handler and inside of here you know if we have a proper result we'll return it as a string and then sometimes what we'll do is we'll say string optional you know if it went wrong go ahead and return nil but nil isn't really helpful right like it doesn't tell our caller what has actually gone wrong so this is where errors come in so first and foremost, you can define custom errors as a enum. So we're going to say custom error is going to extend error and you can drop in your cases that represent different error cases. So here I can go ahead and say maybe invalid URL, you can go ahead and say URL empty and other, et cetera, et cetera. Now comes the point where we're writing a function. How do we actually throw or say an error has occurred? So let's say we have a function called validate URL, and this is going to return a Boolean to us, whether a input a URL parameter is in fact valid. Now, the first thing that might come to mind is, well, we can just return false if a URL is invalid, and that's, you know, call it a day, that's good enough. But what if we want to actually know why a URL is invalid? So first and foremost, we need to pass in a URL here, or maybe we can actually even pass in a string in here and in here we would have to do a bunch of checks so for example we'd have to say guard that the url uh, is not empty and of course if it is empty we know that it is false so we can say return false and let's see let's actually call a url string to name it a little more appropriately and after this down here we would need to create a url so we would need to say guard let url uh, equals uh, URL and pass in the actual string like this. Otherwise, we know we can't create it, therefore it is false. And finally, we can go ahead and say, we know we've created it, so it is in fact true, a valid URL. Now let's go ahead and reformat this since we don't need that unwrap here. And this is pretty good, right? There's nothing wrong with this function. But where do we actually throw these various errors? So the way we would throw them is by first annotating this function with the throws keyword. And what this is basically telling uh, Swift is that this function can throw an error, right? Hence the name throws. Now, instead of just returning false here, we wanna throw an error. So we're gonna say throw our custom error and the error that we wanna throw is the URL is empty. And similarly, we're gonna do this for the cases down below as well. So we only have one more. So in this case, we're gonna say throw, and we're gonna once again say custom error. And here I am gonna go ahead and say invalid URL. Notice we don't need the return key when we are throwing an error, and we're not using this other one. But let's actually take a look at calling this function. So let's say we have a check valid. And in here, let's say we create a URL. Let me create just a random URL here. We'll say iosacademy.io. And now in here, what I want to do is I want to say let result is going to be uh, validate URL and passing in this URL string, I should call it. And what you'll quickly see is that we're going to get an error on this line. Hopefully, there we go. And what this is basically yelling at us uh, is about is the fact that this function can throw an error. 
So this is where we would need to prefix this call with the try keyword. Now we're gonna get another error again because we need to actually drop this whole thing inside of a do catch block. And in the catch block, the error, if one is thrown, will be caught in the catch block. So this might look familiar for those of you that might have not written your own throwing errors before. This is exactly how Apple has built out JSON decoder when you're converting data from an API call to a uh, object using Codable. Now, instead of using just the try with a do catch here, there is a corner you could cut. I don't recommend doing this, but I'll show you guys nevertheless. You can say try question mark, which is try optional. And what this is going to basically do now is it will ignore the error uh, if one is thrown, but results here will now be bool optional. Because if an error has occurred, it's going to disregard the error. It'll let you write your code this way. But because of that, we might not actually have a valid uh, Boolean. So you would at that point need to unwrap it like so. So it kind of defeats the purpose of throwing errors. If you really want to, you know, model something out quickly, you can go down this route. But if not, I recommend using the do catch uh, block so you can actually handle those errors appropriately. So this all said and done, let's go ahead and open up a brand new project in Xcode or create one, I should say, and let's do a bit of a more uh, realistic example. We'll go ahead and stick with a single view app there or the app template. And I'm going to go ahead and say throws uh, example and we'll go ahead and stick with let's make sure this is uh, in UI kit. So storyboard. Uh, and let's go ahead and continue. This is valid in Swift UI as well. I'm just using UI kit for the sake of simplicity. And the next thing I'm going to do is grab the URL here, which is the URL to just an API that returns a list of user JSON. And we're going to call this API from our view controller. And we're going to see how we can write this function to throw an error. So I'm going to say fetch users. Now this guy is going to throw. And similarly, uh, it's going to also uh, return a result. In this case, the results we're going to hold globally. So what we're going to do in here is we're going to say guard let URL is going to be a URL with uh, the API string that I just went ahead and copied. And let me go ahead and expand our window here so we have a little more room to work with. And inside of here, we want to throw an error. We don't just want to break because if it just returns, we don't exactly know what has gone wrong. So let's go ahead and create a custom enum up here. And this is going to be user fetch error. And it's going to be of type error. And this is going to be invalid URL. It's the first case that we got here. And here we are going to throw a user fetch error. And this is going to be a invalid URL error, just like that. The next thing we want to do is actually create our task. So we're going to say URL session shared we're going to say data task with a url and a completion handler let's see if i can find it this guy right here we'll pass in the url and this callback is going to give us data a response and a error now first and foremost if we have an error we should probably just throw it so we're going to say if let's error equals error go ahead and throw that error else if let uh, data equals data go ahead and try to decode it and we want to have one more else here in case something has gone wrong that is unknown so we might have a unknown case up here so in this case we would return rather throw a user fetch error dot unknown just like that and let's make sure i'm spelling everything correctly here so let's see what's going on in here Let's see, invalid conversion from throwing function of type data and that. So this is another good thing that I wanted to actually come across, which accidentally happened here. When you actually have errors uh, like this, you can't exactly use the throw keyword. And the reason you can't is because this is an asynchronous closure. It is a callback for this URL session data task function. So this function itself cannot throw, hence it's yelling at us here with this error and it's saying, hey, wait a second, you're trying to throw errors in here and we're not allowing uh, for this function to throw an error. So this is a good example where not only would uh, our function need to throw in case any of these synchronous errors occur, in other words, synchronous being not in the callback, and then we could optionally also have this take a completion handler 
And this completion handler can also encapsulate an error. And the way we would do that is by having a result with some result type in here and a error just like that. So let's write out this function and then I'll talk you guys through it. So instead of doing this here, we're going to go ahead and say, call the completion handler with the failure case and pass in said error. And in this case, we are going to still use this error, but instead of throwing it, we're going to say call that completion handler and pass it on in. And in this case, we are going to uh, decode our actual uh, JSON. So the way we're going to do that is by simply saying let result is going to be try to use JSON decoder and decode an array of user objects, which we'll create in a moment to uh, rather from our data, then call the completion handler and pass that result back. If an error is thrown, we're going to go ahead and catch it and uh, call our completion handler. And finally, and most importantly, don't forget to say task.resume here to actually kick off the uh, API call. Now we need to create that user struct up here, which should be codable. And it's basically only going to have a name. We're just creating it for the purposes of uh, this code here being correct. And let's see. So here we're getting yelled at because this string for our results should be an array of user objects. Just like that, we should see that error go away. And now let's take a look at calling this function. So you might be thinking you can go ahead and simply do this. We're going to say fetch user. Here's the callback, which is a result. We would switch on said result. In the success case, we have our users. I would print out users dots count so we can make sure we got some users back. And in this case, you know, they returned a error to us. So we're going to print out the error, but you'll quickly see here that it's going to start yelling at us that we can't call this like this. And it's specifically yelling that this call can throw, but it's not marked with the try keyword. So we could go ahead and mark it as try optional and the error will go away. If we only mark it as try, we're going to get another error that the function can try to be called and errors may be thrown, but we're not handling them. So we would again need to move this inside of a do catch just like that. And in this case, we would have to handle that error as well. So I would just go ahead and print out the error. So let's go ahead and give this a run in the simulator. Let's make sure we're getting some valid data back and then I'll mess up. Uh, I'll mess up something in our URL to allow it to, uh, you know, force it to fail and make sure that our throwing is actually working. Now, one thing you might be wondering is why would I want to use, uh, you know, th a thrown error, a thrown error, I should say, over a completion handler. And the honest answer is it is subjective. So a lot of code does take in a completion handler and it's perfectly okay if you're passing an error back so long as you handle it appropriately. But some functions do some synchronous work where you want to also check the uh, errors. And a good example here is we want to validate that this URL is correct. So we could go ahead and instead of throwing an error like this, we could also alternatively say completion failure and pass this back. And nothing is wrong with that. And in fact, some people prefer it. However, throwing is actually a little easier to unit test. That's the first thing I'll mention here. And testing is pretty critical once you start getting into, you know, larger, more professional based applications. The other nicety about this is that you're not in this like loop, this like hell of completion handler callback. And it's a lot nicer uh, personally, I think, to deal with. So let's take a look at our console. We're in fact getting down here uh, 10 users back, which is what we expect. Now let me go ahead and screw up the URL here. We'll say HTTPS, which should be invalid, of course. And we should see that this error gets thrown and we are printing it out up here. So if we take a look, we get a whole lot of stuff dumped in here. But the most important thing that we care about is the fact that a error was thrown. So let's see if I can go ahead and find it here. So it looks like it actually isn't throwing an error. So let me just actually make this an empty string. That way I'll 100% know that the uh, URL, you know, is invalid. And boom, there we're getting an invalid URL. It is being printed right here because we're throwing the error right here. And in this do catch, we're trying to make this API call to fetch users, but it throws an error. Therefore, we come in here. 
So yeah, that is uh, a throwed, thrown error in Swift in a nutshell. Pretty useful, pretty commonly used, pretty easy to write syntax for. Some people are uncomfortable with it, but the more you start using it, the more familiar you'll get. And keep in mind, a little subjective, do what works best for you. But the key takeaway is make sure you're handling errors appropriately. Error handling is not the coolest topic in the world by any means, but it's extremely important and a lot of people cut corners on it. Don't be one of those people I was many years ago, and it took me a long time to learn the merits of handling errors appropriately. So that is all I've got for you guys today. If you haven't done so already, drop a like down below, hit subscribe if you're into iOS and want to stick around, comment any questions, concerns, bugs, feedback, video suggestions. Always love hearing from you guys. I'll see you guys in the next one.